good morning. So this week, instead of just looking at the speed pane and seeing it as an isolated piece, I thought it would be interesting for you to see all the different stages that go into making one of those final pieces of work. In this case, I'm going to show you the background of this piece, which I'm going to call Dear Mother from now on because I couldn't really think of a name. This is just, this is just how it goes. The first stage is usually a sketch. So it's just a normal sketch in the sketchbook. And this piece was inspired by a trip I made to a deer park. It was just a small deer park in England. And a lot of the deers at that point had little fawns that were walking around and you could get really up close and personal with them. And I don't know, it just, it just inspired me to do this kind of piece where I tried to humanize the deer and look at that relationship between the two. It doesn't make sense, but you know, that's where it comes from. So I took that and I just sketched it, I just, you know, it, it's hard to come up with where you get ideas from. So then from that, I took the photos that I had and I blew them up and I got them in the sketchbook next to it and I took that drawing and I started trying to rough out an idea of what colours did I want to use because I often struggle with which colours I should use in a composition. I always have done. I think it's more because I've always used black and white. I've always used pencil and pen and it's only more recently I've looked into colour. Not that I don't love colour, I just never really used it. So I always find it a lot easier to start sketching out an idea of colour before I do it. And obviously in this case I tried to limit the colour scheme and I've tried to go with more yellows and browns and greens, just very like natural, just the colours that I saw, I just wanted to try and emulate that through the drawing. And then finally I took that drawing, I got it onto the Bristol board paper and I just painted, I just painted it with watercolours. There's, there's a bit of pen work in there as well, just to add a bit of definition, but it's mostly just a watercolour piece. And though I am quite happy with the piece, there were just certain things that I thought hadn't translated from the sketch to the final piece of work that I'd ended up creating. In particular, I just felt like the detail was missing. I just didn't think that there was enough of it. In the original sketch, I felt like the face was far more defined, whereas in the end piece, because of all of the larger white spots that I wanted to try and emulate from the forms, it just kind of disrupted the shading. Now that's me, that was me adding the white ink, and I didn't shade the white ink, so it just ends up looking too flat. So anyway, because of that, I decided to take it into Photoshop and start to add the detail to it. As you can probably see, the face is just a bit too flat. There's just, just not enough information. There's certain things just aren't proportionally correct. You know, I, I think if I had the time again, I probably would have tried to make this piece a lot larger. I would have made the face of the woman and the child far more prominent on the entire sheet. I think I would have broken the edges of the sheet with the antlers. I reduced the size far too much, so I think that that was just, just a mistake to make. But anyway, this is us fixing it. So the first thing that I did was I was trying to look into how do I add that depth and contrast into both the mother's and the child's face. First I looked at changing the dimensions of certain parts that just didn't look right, like especially the eye was just wrong. So. I changed that up, I edited that through, once that was all finished I decided I would try and get some of that shading and tone back into the drawing. So I take the pipette tool, I pull out certain colours from the painting, so mostly darker browns, and then I try and use the colour tool to change it between both darker and warm tones with red in the brown and lighter bluer tones of brown. Now you can see it slightly, maybe the lighter blue ones appear more purple to you, that's the idea. If you have those kind of shades between cooler and warmer colours, it can add a lot more depth and warmth. It's mo most important, I think, in portraiture especially. That's why I've added that, and I kind of worked between the two. I was dashing the pen. I was just trying to keep it very light and just blending it into the paint. I didn't want it to disrupt the texture of that paint too much, but I think you'll find by the end it does a little bit. <laughs> And on that note, I'm going to let the work explain itself for a little bit. I'll come back every now and then in the rest of the video just to explain certain parts a bit further as need be.
bit darker and, and define edges that I've lost while I was painting, as I mentioned before. So as I'm becoming happy with that, I start going on to the lighter tones, just to contrast those pieces and to add the details that I did have, but with more shade this time, and just work more with the face rather than kind of like blotched on than they were in the first case. So once I'm happy with that, I start working around the rest of the piece, just add a little bit more definition to those. I take the green that I've had in the little parts of the antlers, I add them lighter and I start adding that into shading and just add a little bit of a cooler coloured highlight to the headpiece just to make it those warmer areas of the skin of the deer a bit brighter, just add a bit of that reflective light almost from like a grassy, like you know, different landscape that I imagine them in. The little child was the hardest part of it, as they always are, or at least they always are for me. Um, it can't really go too defined or else they become old wrinkly little men. You can't go too simple or else they lose every little bit of expression on their faces and become scary little dolls. Oh, they're just, they're an absolute nightmare. And uh, as you can tell, when you watch me do this, I'm still practicing this. But I hope that you know seeing some of the mistakes that I made might help a little bit when you're going and approaching that as a portraiture because it's just you can never get enough practice with this. <laughs> Lastly, it comes to the background, because I think when it was earlier it was such a flat piece, I don't think it really mattered that it was just a plain yellow background, but now that I've added so much detail to the faces and to the antlers, they're starting to look way too far and I just think that it's starting to get a bit lost in that background, so I decided to take the green, create like an overlay layer where it can almost appear like a green piece of acetate and just try to carry on that kind of organic look with these like, you know, more broader leaves. Just add a little bit more shape and just to pull the whole piece a little bit more together in space. And finally on top of that I took that dark green pen and I began to outline certain parts of the structure of the headpiece and of the face. Just add a bit further definition and to pull that as the main image out of a very flat background.
Okay, and that's it. I hope you found that interesting. And if you have any questions or any thoughts, or if you think this was boring, just, you know, leave me a message and I'll just carry on making them. I hope you had a good time and keep in touch. See you later. Goodbye.